Hello, everyone. Hi. It is Xbox O'Clock. Time for Xbox. It is Xbox time. It's damp in here. The moistest video game coverage on the internet is back. Uh, and, uh, and hello, I'm Jeff Gerstman. It's great to see you this fine morning. It's been a hectic morning around these parts. I've been trying to keep up on like, is, you know, because there's always like those last minute leaks, right? There's the the past couple of days, you know, uh, have been things like, oh, there's a new banjo maybe coming along um, and, and so on and so forth. A, a Twitter account is out there saying that maybe Persona is coming to the Xbox in some form today. Um, and... Yeah, I don't know. It's been been leaking all over the place. It's been leaking all over this room. Uh, apparently, my air conditioner uh, has been leaking water under the wall into my office for an undetermined amount of time. <laughs> so, um, so I woke. I noticed that. Um, I noticed that early this morning, and then ran out uh, to the Home Depot and bought a wet dry vacuum and started sucking water out of the carpet uh and uh so that's that's been that's been there and so yeah i don't know the leaks are all over the place the leaks are coming from inside the house um it's been uh, a disaster of a morning we've got uh someone coming out to look at the 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 thing that's causing the leak tomorrow and then um you know thursday is going to be when the uh, you know, the, the, Hey, did you do a bunch of water damage sort of stuff? Yeah. Whether the condensation, yeah. If maybe that drain is plugged, there's a few different things that it, that it could be, uh, because we've had the, the air conditioner worked on a couple of times recently as it's been busted. Apparently low refrigerant is something that can cause that as well. So, uh, so that might be, that might be part of it. What else are we going to see today? I don't know. There's, uh, there's always the, um, that Minecraft uh, RTS looking thing that I saw some screenshots of a while back. Um, maybe that'll turn up. That seemed like it was in a position, to, a very playable spot, obviously. Um, the, their, you know, screenshots and stuff like that are getting out. But um, but that thing, uh, codename Badger, my understanding is that it is referred to as. We've got about 12 minutes to go here um, before the start of the show. See? Let's let's hear what they've got going pre-show. Very laid back. Very laid back. Kyle's looking for a Gears of War collection announcement today. Hmm. I don't know. It's uh, because they are. Hmm. They did that Gears Ultimate Edition thing of Gears One, right? Like that's. What would a Gears collection? I mean, you know, they could always, if they wanted to put in the work, they could do Unreal Engine Five versions of all the Gears games. But I, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe that's a thing. You think about it, like the the engine transition period is actually not a terrible time to do those types of collections and remakes and stuff because teams will need to um, train up on the new tech, right? So there's there's always that kind of idea about, oh, hey, we're gonna. Um, you know, we're just going to do one project of moving an older game to this engine and, and all that other stuff. Yeah, a lot of people talking about GoldenEye. Um, that, I mean, whatever, those achievements showed up, that thing's happening in, in some way, shape, or form, right? So uh, maybe this is the place for that. It feels like that's something that's been ready for a while to be announced, unless they're working out some Nintendo end of things. I guess people today are now saying, hey, there's a... Um, you know, EA connection here and that perhaps EA is going to be involved in the publishing of Bond games. Um, which, what does that mean for that IO Interactive Bond thing? Are they going to end up being a part of that? I have no idea. A lot of potential 
I, th this business is weird, right? Like everyone's doing deals with everybody. Screw it. So yes, Blood Wake 2. Yes, that's, I can confirm here. Blood Wake 2 is happening. Cocteau Chojin, uh, a prequel to Cocteau Chojin is in the works. We are making it all happen. Um, over on the Discord. Uh, seeing some predictions here. A lot of Starfield, some Japanese stuff. I feel like that's a pretty a wide prediction there. Uh, yeah, will there be a will there be a Hideo Kojima project? I don't know. Uh, Yon Song saying Dragon's Dogma two. Uh, that's possible, but isn't um, um, isn't Isn't Capcom doing their own thing? Yeah, they're doing their own thing. Sorry, that was not me wondering if Capcom was doing their own thing. That was me wondering if Capcom had announced that they were doing their thing, which it would be ridiculous if they hadn't announced it by now. Um, yeah, so if Capcom has their own thing and they've already shown Street Fighter VI, I don't know that they also give away Dragon's Dogma 2. But, you know, whatever. More people will probably watch this Xbox thing than will watch the Capcom thing. So if... Uh, if Xbox came to them and said, give us something, it'd probably be better for them to, to show it here than it would be to save it for their own thing. A lot of people asking about Quake or hoping for Quake and saying, just typing Quake over and over again. You would like to think, right, that that, um, that, that, that kind of awesome Quake port that they did to console recently or the the you know they updated the pc version on steam and all that other stuff to kind of modernize aspects of it and make it like add cross play to quake it's so weird like you hopefully that's something that's like hey uh and also we're ready to do some more some more quake stuff that i i would yes i i would love to see what they will what they might do with with quake uh Skate 4? I, you know, who, I mean, I guess EA hasn't really announced that they're going to do anything of their own, so maybe, you know, hey, anything is possible, right? I think the, the recent talk out of a Phil Spencer was that this was going to be focused on gameplay, um, which, which I guess makes sense, um, considering they have had some shows that were pretty gameplay light recently that maybe all those games they announced are now able, they're ready to show something. I'm going to turn on this other light. Uh, really light up this room like that. Oh, see, that's much better. Um, you know, Battletoads sequel and all that other stuff. A lot of people ask him, you know, am I going to talk to Phil Spencer? I would love to talk to Phil Spencer uh, again, sometime um, down the line, you know, it's uh, been a very hectic week or th three around here. Uh, so not a lot of time to set things up and uh, and book interviews and, and a lot of stuff like that. So, um, you know, we'll get there. You're still less than a week in on this entire operation. But uh, but yes, no, I, 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 I enjoy talking to Phil uh, Spencer and would definitely uh, enjoy talking to him again uh, somewhere down the line here. Any chance of Fable? I mean, I feel like we know that they're working on one, right? It's It feels like that's been overdue for an announce for a while. Do I think there's any truth to the rumored one versus 100? I they said they're not showing Fable. Okay, all right. Well, um, do I think that there's any any truth to the the one v 100 thing? I I kind of do. Um, I feel like it makes sense. I think it, it it's it's a cool thing that no one else is really doing. Like a couple of days ago, I was just like, man, you know what? I really miss S Scott Rogowski. I really miss HQ. And uh, I, don't, I wonder if too much time has passed to literally go get Scott Rogowski to host um, one versus one hundred. Has that has that ship sailed? Do they do they need that? Do they, do they would it would it benefit from having your boy Rogo in there straight out the sweet green um, or? Um, 
or is enough time passed that they don't necessarily need to to do that but that i think that was when a lot of that one versus 100 talk kind of kicked off in earnest around the time that that stuff was blowing up right because it was a lot of people going like oh my god like this we this trivia the hq thing is so big and, and people i was all those knockoffs and and all that sort of stuff and then um and then it all blew up and went away so um yeah what a weird what a weird thing right that like that whole like the hq stuff that very much just like came and went it got so big so scary scary big we're at four minutes and 20 seconds away um from from getting into this um it, you know a lot of people it's it, i'm in an interesting spot here i guess like it's probably not the the kind of um it's it's probably not the common perspective on this but i am a person who is like hey yeah they're gonna they're gonna show a bunch of starfield and i'm like i don't i don't i kind of don't need to see it yet i it's like i don't or whatever like you know that you know you feel like you know some things about that game and you're like okay cool like when it comes out i'll play that game like i i kind of don't i kind of don't need to see a ton of it um they could there's some they should give some more details and that's fine but like this word going around that like you know if if like 20 percent of this showcase is devoted to starfield that seems insane to me yes especially if they could be showing you know an hd remake of doom rpg <laughs> that would they should do that yes we're porting phone we're running phone, phone games in 4k over here baby the future is now um yeah like a halo story expansion or dlc or something i wonder if what they'll do uh in terms of like campaign content for halo down the line um it'd be nice to see them do something more um yeah news from obsidian would be very welcome um for sure. Uh, do I think they'll know, they'll mention anything around the Activision Blizzard acquisition? I, I don't know that there's much to say. Um, I, I don't think that there's much to, to really, um, you know, in in many ways they'll probably they're probably just trying to keep that under the radar and hoping it clears all the regulation stuff. And if they really started hyping it up right now, when it's not due to close until like next year, um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that they, I don't know that they go hard on that. Also, you know, like, you know, Activision kind of shot their shot, right? They're like, here's our campaign level uh, for Call of Duty. Like they showed that Achilles thing and, and all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, there's that rumor that there's a Spyro game in the works somewhere. You know, sure. Maybe something like that shows up. People keep typing Hellgate London in the chat. And you, I, I love you. I love everyone that is uh, that is holding a torch for Hellgate London. You are disaster people, much like myself. Um, but <laughs> don't be don't be crazy. <laughs> um, sure, buy a commando. Yeah, yes, yes. Buy a commando sequel where you get to learn about all of the human souls that are embodied in people's robot legs and, and all this other stuff. Like, sure, man. Sure. Why wouldn't you do it? All right. We're just about ready to go here. It's nice. It's, it's I, I, I feel like uh, going into these things, there's usually like a situation where there's like, oh, I, I know about a third of the things here. Uh, and, uh, and the rest will be surprises. Like I feel like I know way less about what they're about to show than than I do in most years. Because <laughs> I've been kind of busy. Keely on Twitter is saying that they're going to open with Redfall. That's a video game. That's a video game. Oh man, Keely also says that the briefing in the building is about two minutes ahead of the stream. Which is, um, you know, people in the, in the building will be, if you want to be spoiled, then look on Twitter, I guess. I'm going to need uh, some of you to kind of help me out a little bit on the audio. I'm going to turn this up so we can hear it better. But uh, let me know if you can't hear me anymore as I pump this up. Um... 
And here we go. It's a lot of 18s. It's a hot Z right there. Enjoy your gaming. Wait a minute, this is Redfall. Something's off at the church. There's blood in the baptismal font, and pastors gone missing. And my genius plan was to investigate it alone. Of course. Of course. Oh shit. That's just walking around seeing blood and saying aw shit over and over again. I feel like if the way this world has been painted, like at this point, wouldn't you be used to just like, okay, yeah. Uh, more blood. It's another one of these. Ah, shit! What was that? He is the truth in the darkness. Ah, shit! The the shadow. I've seen the movement in the dark. I've seen the shadow. I see it. Oh, Lord! I'll bite out your heart. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Trying to get a good look at this weird looking dude. Okay, here we go. Yeah, oh, well, we did not get much of a look at him. Oh shit, there's more. Oh shit. This just be every line of dialogue in this game. Should just be here going, oh shit. That's actually my Street Fighter 6 announcer pack idea is I want to record one that's just me and every time anyone hits anyone, I just go, oh shit. You know? Redfall used to look like it was straight out of a postcard. A picturesque island off the coast of Massachusetts. The bustling historic downtown. The seafront district. And the old lighthouse. And now? Then, oh shit. Something happened. People started vanishing. And those who didn't, sold out. Big time. Fast forward, basically everyone's either a vampire, a cultist trying to become a vampire, or dead. And these aren't just trashy movie vampires. These monsters blocked out the sun and pushed back all the water, totally cut us off from the outside world. Gotta admit though, if I have to be stuck on an island full of vampires, I'm glad it's with y'all. Feelings mutual. So I guess yes. is the, is the Aww, implication thanks, there Jacob. that the rest of the world is not vampired up? We've also got Remy, our engineer genius, and her little robot buddy. She means you be born. Wouldn't they just nuke this island? The best robot. And our resident expert on all things creepy. I prefer the term cryptozoologist, but to each their own. Last but not least, yours truly. I have these weird powers. You know, these weird powers, because this is a class-based shooter. Luckily, the vampires and their sycophants aren't discreet about... We are doing cooperative things versus the vampires. The answers we need are inside I'm the one that can shield. Traps this one is the pet class. Spotted some bloodsuckers in their fan club near the festival grounds. Let's start there. Ghosting out. Could go straight at him, or just slip past. Let's just get this done. On my mark. Hmm. Oh shit, blood bag! Oh shit! They know we're here. Look alive! <laughs> this one is mine. Going up! Just make a ghost box that you can jump off of. Neat. My cryptid hunter's intuition tells me there's a nest nearby. Your what? Tef, that's not a thing. Found something. Oh, now I simply must go in there. What is that? Where does it go? Oh, shit. Some kind of collective consciousness. That's impossible. 
There's the movie theater. I used to come here all the time. Why'd they have to mess this up for me? Ah, shit. It's a lot. It'll collapse any second. Run! <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. All the grannies want to sip date. you call all parching in. All ugly like a brown fur car again. We can see that monologue and argue. I'm like, hey, this is. This looks okay. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't. I feel like the kind of co-op shooter, the kind of post left, for, post post left for dead stuff has been very hit and miss for me. Oh shit! Like the bits of color, you know, coming off fire and stuff like that to kind of just people have been dying to see that video game. So congratulations to them. You have now seen more of it, but with no date. We're, uh, world. Hang on. I don't have a world premiere button, but I do have this. Enjoy your gaming. Okay. is drugged. You're the only one that can stop them. Realize we're gonna have to take out the entire alien drug cartel. Maybe I should just get back to vacuuming. Um, you know, the, the wet carpet here back here. What? Space? Watch this Everybody later. Lives in space, including you. All right, you're a bounty hunter now. You gotta help me rescue my friends. They're Gatlians, just like me. Gatlians, like a gat that's an alien. Is that? Is that? Oh yeah, that's one of my children. They die fast. Don't worry, it's easy to make more. I, I can't like if you had to like there's aspects of this action that look totally okay um but if you're asking me like hey do you want a game where like you know was it like the creator Rick and Morty is every talking gun in the game like, well not everyone but like I don't It's like, check out, check out all the wrong lessons we learned from Borderlands. I. Oh, 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 well, well, okay. Well, now, well, now I sorta, now I can. I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Welcome to the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. Today, we're doing something we've never done before. Enjoy For the gaming. first time ever, our entire show is focused on games you can play over the next 12 months. You're gonna see more gameplay than we've ever had in a show. 12 months. Industry-defining so, racing experiences. It's June 12th. narratives, compelling Make strategy note. titles, and my favorite, the most anticipated open world RPG of the last 20 years all playable in the year ahead. Hmm. And the best part is, with 20 Xbox, years, huh? you'll be able to play those games in more ways than ever before. You can play on your console, PC, or on the go with Xbox Cloud Gaming. You can play 20 years is a long want, time. where you want, and when you want. 
Today, we're going to show you more than 30 titles that are coming to Game Pass, and that is on top of the hundreds of titles coming to members over the next year. Our next announcement shows that the benefits of Game Pass go well beyond the console. We are thrilled to be working with an iconic team that has built some of the most played, most watched franchises in the entire world. And now, all Game Pass members will be able to unlock the benefits for these incredible games on PC and mobile. For over a decade, players have created a thriving culture of competition and creativity around our games. From clutch plays with friends, to unforgettable moments in esports, to amazing creations that have blown our minds, our community has continually taken Riot Games to new heights. Today, we're proud to invite the Xbox community into that world. We're bringing our biggest PC and mobile games to Game Pass. Subscribers will unlock every champion on League and Wild Rift, all Valorant agents, select cards in huh. the Terra, and little legends in huh. team fight tactics. That's, um... And that's just the start. Thank you for coming May, on this journey. Perhaps not for me, but that's games. kind of fucking crazy. Um... That's, that's a interest. Wow. Holy shit. Like, that's, uh... For a game that has been selling a lot of that stuff for a lot of years. Uh, holy shit. That's just like a, like... You just, like, walk into the Riot office and then just start, like... Doing this until they say stop? Like, what? How? Jeez. That can't have been cheap. But also, you know, at, at the same time, for games like League of Legends, user acquisition and getting people in there and all the other stuff is the endless struggle, right? So eventually you do make these deals because eventually you're like, we just need people through the door and then hopefully they'll buy a skin and all this other stuff. Um, and then they'll make all their money on skins. In some ways, it's like they're just going Dota, right? They're, they're just like... They're going Dota, but Microsoft is paying them to make it happen. That's, uh, yeah, that, hmm. huh. I guess I have not played Valorant since it first came out, so I, I have not been keeping track on what their model was for some reason. I, I thought that you got the characters out of the gate on that one, but I guess it makes sense that it would be the same as all the other Riot stuff. That's wild. That's, uh... That... Uh, <laughs> that seems like a very big deal. I, again, like, I think there's a lot of players who are just gonna look at that and you're like, fucking whatever, not my bag, but, uh... Like me, for example, but... That seems like a huge, so a huge get. For Hugo. He's not dead yet. The macula is not just in Hugo's blood; it concerns everybody. And it playing in the Discord is saying no, is posted something that seems to imply that to get all the champions in League of Legends, it, it would cost you six hundred and forty-one dollars. Remember, no more killing soldiers, no more killing us. Look out! There's a killer around here! One of our men has been murdered! You're only making it worse! Amicia, don't! You! Ah, oh, 
Oh. I'm tired of being afraid. I'll show them that it's over. Finally. <laughs> See, they're nothing. nothing Running and holding them. hands seems like one of those things that is a lot more difficult to make. Jesus Christ. <laughs> not them. Push that dude into a pestering pile of fucking rats. Sure. Ugh. <laughs> So does the kid control the rats? Enjoy your gaming. Very clean and simple presentation here. Oh, right. Right. They're making a proper Forza. Of course they're. Yeah, right. Eh, sure. All right. I guess it's been long enough that you can do that. Huh? I. They are saying this is in-game footage. The video is cut off at the top. You're right. Why is that? Perhaps that will be better. Forza Motorsport is back. I'm Dan Greenwald, GM of Motorsport, and I'm joined by Chris Asaki, creative director at Turn 10. Forza is known for its photoreal beauty and state-of-the-art immersion. Built from the ground up to showcase the Xbox Series X and S consoles, including techniques like real-time ray tracing on track, this is the most technically advanced racing game ever made. Does it run Today, on 60, at 60, with all the bells and whistles on consoles? Or will you have to use a PC Welcome to do Maple that? Valley. This track has been a fan favorite since the original Motorsport launched back in 2005. For the first time in Forza Motorsport, fully dynamic time of day brings Maple Valley to life in stunning detail. What you are seeing is an in-engine gameplay demo presented using a single camera with no cuts. Let's jump in with the M8. This looks extremely good. These cars look extra these wheels are extremely round. I like the flash bulbs in the crowd, that's cool. We've completely overhauled the driving experience. Does that happen anymore? How many people this bring flash cameras to times auto races? In the fidelity of our physics simulation. Let's advance time of day here and look at the world details. Everything you see is new and has been captured with photogrammetry and 3D material scans. Advanced rendering and procedural generation techniques bring a new level I mean, of realism to the track. This looks damn good. <laughs> Here you can see the beautiful. I mean, time of day is fine, but I was told that weather is what truly changes grass, everything. And uh, 3D vegetation, skies and clouds, they all demonstrate clouds? a mm, clouds? generational leap in beauty and detail. Let's advance time again. All these people are now dead. You are looking at our all new dynamic time of day. This is a fundamental Going forward 100 years into the future. The these cars are still and racing. Weather is available on every track. These new simulation details add further depth, drama, and dynamics to the racing experience. 
addition to our dynamic time of day. Who brought all the fireworks? What is this, Forza Horizon? Come on now. Come together to deepen the realism and immersion in the world. Changes in the time of day also change ambient temperatures, which affect track surface temps. Okay. Grip yeah. is also affected by these track temp changes, rubbering in, and of course, weather. Let's head to the pits. We've added features that players have been asking for. Tire and fuel management, multiple tire compounds, and new depth in car building create the ultimate racing playset. Advanced materials and shaders paired with ray tracing bring out incredible detail in the gold heat wrap, anodized aluminum, and carbon fiber. And, and then the music swells as like, ah, oh, carbon fiber, yes. Is a place where ray tracing um, really shines. He ain't wrong. It looks damn good. Car damage is a racing reality. In Forza Motorsport, huh. Car damage is reproduced down to the individual scratches on the bodywork. You can see here really? some of the new details in the directionality of damage, how the paint peels away at exposed and raised edges, wow. in the wheel abrasions, and even in the dirt buildup. They did. They did it. They fucking. I mean, Using the power how far can you go with the damage? Right. That's consoles. the question. But ray tracing makes everything feel more connected or they're at least trying to reflecting onto other cars cars reflect in their own mirrors bodywork mirrors Great reflect in other cars points. reflecting other cars things just feel more natural more real i doubt those cars come apart the way you want them to we believe that the accuracy of our overhaul physics the beauty of our cars and tracks our new dynamic time of day and then Advanced just like have a boat, just blood wake two. Here we go. On track, lead to a generational leap in immersion. This is the all new Forza Motorsport. Hey, I, you know, uh, I don't want to like uh, talk out of turn, speak out of school here, but uh, that looked pretty good. That looked pretty damn good. Again, curious about where, you know, what do you get on which console? What kind of frame rates are we hitting where? Are we, is this, is part of the screen still getting cut off? I, I feel like I'm, hmm. I'll keep an eye on it if it is still getting chopped. But I thought I fixed that. Old planes. Old planes. It's another one of those things that I I love that this exists. I, I love that they're still putting more and more stuff into Flight Simulator and like. All right. Do they have is are, is helicopter? Did they not? Do they have any helicopters before? No, right? Is that? Can I play as a flying giraffe? Fortieth anniversary edition. Forty forty freaking years. We took the Pelican out of uh, Halo Infinite and put it into Flight Simulator. Sorry.
Space. Space flight simulator. Why not? What is flight if not infinite? Which one's your favorite? Mine's Tracer. She's like, she is not the cavalry's here. She's my favorite. You're one of those heroes. I subscribe to a couple of good creators that make some really good Tracer fan art. Even the best journeys end. But a new one is right around the corner. Am I, strike? I am your queen! Let's take him to the wasteland! What oh, punch uh, well, is all I need. October, huh? So this is just the, I mean, is this going to include any of that single player stuff they were talking about, or? Free to play. I assume there's still like a, buy this boxed copy equivalent and get skinned up. Yeah, PVEs, they separated it, right? So this is just the... All right, well, I think the only stuff that would get me to potentially check out Overwatch in any kind of detail would be that PVE stuff, so... Surprise! You'll like this one! What the triple? Finally... A shooter character with a dude. No wastelander has ever made it to the reckoning before. <laughs> but here I am. A free for all with zero rules. And the survivor gets the throne. Why do they put King Howell? Why are, why are they sliding like Borderlands missions into Overwatch 2? <laughs> Not until today. <gasps> I mean, I guess the idea of a free-for-all kind of mode or some kind of thing that's not just Overwatch, like, that's something with potential, I guess. Huh. Man, talk about a franchise that is, like, burned up at so much goodwill over the years. History is filled with moments of greatness. Some well known, some lost to time. But what about the history that could have been if you were its architect? How would you I, reshape the world? I would build uh What new stories would you two tell? stone hinges. That's what I would do. And when your people speak would you listen? Hell no. How would you lead them in this new world? Crush them into dust. History is filled with moments of greatness. But these will be yours. It's just say it's your world now and then it blows up. You just go, ah, shit. <laughs> Whoops. Ara. It's good to be here, celebrating what's going to be our biggest year yet. 
That includes a few of the projects being developed across Bethesda's eight studios, starting with Red Wet Fall two. and the world's first look at gameplay earlier in the show. Wet two. Red Fall is from the studio if that we all keep saying it, and Prey. It'll have to happen it's eventually. So much of Arcane's DNA coursing through its veins. Compelling heroes, open world campaign, Rogue Warrior customization, prequel. solo or with friends, we can't wait for you to play Redfall when it releases early next year. If you're looking for something to sink your teeth into right now, we've got the Elder Scrolls Online, where you can adventure alongside one of the biggest and most welcoming communities in gaming. This year, Zenimax Online Studios is taking you somewhere that has never been explored in any Elder Scrolls game. The Elder Scrolls Online High Isle comes to Xbox next week. It sounds like Elder Scrolls Online is, is actually pretty good. Um, generations, the Bretts and elites I haven't really touched much of it since... And comfort. Maybe since launch, honestly. And, and even then, it was like, yeah, there's something to this. I just don't really want to play this type of game as an MMO. And I think they've really... My understanding is they made something that you can definitely play by yourself if you so desire. Yeah, so it just feels janky to you. I mean, it's an Elder Scrolls game. It's supposed to be janky, right? I mean, that's like number three on the on the like appealing bullet point list. Is it's an Elder Scrolls game, so it's kind of fucked up. It's a good question from Avarox here. Can you get high on Skuma in Elder Scrolls Online? I certainly hope so. If there's no skooma, then what are we even doing? Fallout turns 25 this year. As we celebrate the legacy of this storied franchise, Bethesda Game Studios takes Fallout 76 players out of Appalachia for the first time and returns to a beloved location. Expeditions the Pit is coming this September. Come in. Hmm. I don't. If you're receiving I, this and you're brave enough, come join us at the pit. Your rivals. I remember the pit stuff being all right, it might right? Not like much. That, this place but not, is our home, yeah. and together we can take it back. Okay. From these rad worshiping fanatics. These rad worshiping fanatics. They're so fucking rad. Is anyone um looking at both my both my chats here? A anyone is anyone in either of these chats playing Fallout 76 on a semi-regular basis? I have I saw one person that I thought I saw. Hell no, hell yeah, I am. I thought I saw I thought I saw one person. Semi-regularly, you pop Bethesda okay. Game Studios has been busy, and not just with Fallout 76. After defining one and a half yeses, genre, it looks like. like oh, there's one, there's another Oblivion, one, two and a half. Skyrim, Fallout 3, and Fallout 4, they're going even bigger with Starfield. Later in the show, my good friend Todd Howard will be here to reveal more of their next epic RPG. Okay. Enjoy your gaming. So is this going to be the Lego stuff then that showed up on... on, uh, on Steam? Yes. Yes, it is, yes. This is... Oh, 
Pop Punk is back. And then you say it never left. gonna be an out today thing i feel like this july okay those add-ons have typically been pretty good so cool my dad tells stories of a terrible war that happened across the sky heroes fought and died to give us a chance to start over all that I know from their Earth are the creatures they sent along with us. And here on Arat, every day is a fight to survive. So true. But if anyone can tame this new world, we can. <laughs> <laughs> this is arc two then right is that or arc, is it just straight up arc two or is it arc colon diesel's revenge okay these dinosaurs are all about family enjoy your gaming that time he said it ironically that was an, an, an ironic enjoy your gaming You heard of this Unreal Engine? It's getting out there, you know? I don't... I don't... Mm, I don't... I don't... Yeah. I still don't... I don't want to see this. I don't like looking at this. I don't I don't like looking at any of this. Like I'm I'm kidding to a certain extent, but also I don't like looking at this. I, I this is unpleasant to view. Like all this tentacle umbilical stuff. Like I just like bah 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 Scorn indeed, bah. Just some Geiger stuff. Yes, but Geiger stuff rendered at a fidelity that I just... I'm just not sure that I need that in my life. <laughs> when the gods first emerged from the great below, we saw them as saviors. Instead, they unleashed a pestilence on our world. No one yet knows if you can kill a god. I, for one intend to find out hmm. all right Like their cool triangular portals. All right, I like a nice slide. I like a nice downhill slide. Wait, are the are the triangles boost rings? Is this is this Sonic Frontiers? Some of the animation looked a little funky. Yeah, I finally got fall too. Yeah, that's 
this does look more um, open and varied than than Godfall seemed to be for whatever that's worth. It's a low bar to clear. Yeah, I don't know. The thing looked kind of funky. Legends hold great power. They are the dreams we weave into our shared story. Some legends tell of peace. Yeah, so this is this thing. And the beauty of simplicity. Some tell of danger. Legends we hold dearest are legends of hope, of creativity, and of bravery. And friendships that change the world forever. Is this trailer just going to be a cinematic? This is the legend of a united overworld. United by you. Okay, here we go. So yeah, you know, it seems like maybe RTS-like, but you are controlling a character along the way. Um, you know, some people have said like a brutal legend-ish sort of thing, or... Or yes, Battle Zone. <laughs> Yes, my, my first thoughts were like battle zone and like total annihilation and some of that other stuff, but but yeah. Minecraft Legends kinda also sends a specific link like brutal legend? Like yeah. I remember when you first arrived. You made quite the entrance. Opens up and Banjo and Kazooie hop out. You wanted to make a new life for yourself. Damn. So it's a survival crafting game, but you're a mech? Is that the... Never get out of your trench. could have guessed that there would be a mystery I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this together in together. four player co-op like your frontier it kind of rhymes that's that looks kind of neat that looks like it could be cool i don't know mech games like it's you don't see a lot of mech games that have you doing that so that's kind of cute Right, right. Okay. I did not get into this game. I, you know, I assume that they have done more to it uh, since the last time I checked it out. But I, I don't know. It, it seemed fine. It seemed like there was a, like when it first came out. I remember like people were going crazy for it, and it blew up big. You know, in a way that seemed almost strange. Um, but I don't know. From playing it, I was like, this 
this seems totally okay but it, I, it did not grab me um yeah i mean with the addition of of this off-brand hives song i think we're really now i'm feeling it Enjoy your gaming. There he is again. Hello? Anyone here? When that, when that voice started talking and said "only" or the "oh," I was like, "Is this? Is it gonna be that disturbed song? Is he about to say oh wah? Like I. Since I found the first piece, there must be more. That's him. At this point, if you could only have one next generation console, what would it be? I think it's so dependent on like, do you have a PC or whatever? But if we're gonna say no, you don't have a PC. I think Game Pass is a big deal, um, and that that probably helps a lot. Um, so I would probably go in that direction, just because you know Game Pass will give you a bunch of games to play. All right. Oh. Oh, great! Creepy tentacle. Ugh. Oh, um. oh, oh. I gotta, I gotta drink some water after doing that. That looks cool. Bonjour, everyone. I am excited to be here today to tell you more about Interior Nights, first original creation as dust falls. I am also excited to be it here today. It started with the desire to create a deep interactive experience all levels of players can enjoy to get. Okay. Because stories are brilliant, universal tools that help us understand the heartbreaking beauty of life. This game <sighs> is an uncompromising tale of family, resilience, and sacrifice, written like a prestige TV show with a unique motion graphic novel style that triggers the imagination. This is an interactive story powered by video games that gives you agency over the lives of far from perfect I am also beings. powered by video games. This is a thought-provoking experience you can play with people you love, discover insights about each other, and create shared memories. As the this is meant to be like the um, emotional experience that we hope will leave a mark with the, what, the, the super massive stuff, the, the kind of like, hey, sit on a couch and play through this story game. Thank God that lizard made it out of there. People, Tuak is just a pit stop. Wasn't taking the scenic route your idea? This For us, it felt like a trap. There's enough cash in that safe to put the last few weeks behind us. On the ground, now! You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. But my beard. We've been in the wrong place forever. Sometimes doing the right thing is doing the wrong thing. I've got eyes on two hostages. None of us escaped that night. It's okay. Even those of us who made it out alive. Stop! Yeah, let's take this technology and make a Tom Goes to the Mayor game. We've taken very different paths in life. But they all lead back to Two Rock. Get rid of the cop. Hey there. Evening. Hey, Sam. Say, uh, you haven't seen three fellas in a blue pickup, have you? Nope. Been here all day. How you liking the desert dream? Oh, uh, 
Can't complain. Can I uh, ask what brings you to Two Rock? No. Eight player. Hmm. I wonder if you're voting on choices if it's as an eight player thing or like what is that? I assume that's a like you know choose your own adventure esque sort of thing, but who knows? Maybe maybe everyone gets their own choices. That'd be kind of neat. This is just Naraka Blade Point, right? People still playing this? Played my three rounds of it and and then promptly forgot that it existed until right this moment. What's what's the temperature check so far out of this presentation? I mean, obviously they're not going to start the show with a showstopper and. One has to hope that they are holding some bigger stuff for uh, the later part of the show, but we're coming up on an hour in, and how's everyone doing? It's all right. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. It's okay. Stable. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems this seems like a fine show, but. Enjoy your gaming. You're just like, hey, they showed Silk Song. That's all you need. All right. Yeah. Understandable. I think of the smaller games they've shown here on this show, I, you know, like it's a weird comparison to make maybe, but like, I feel like I came out of that day of the devs stream and then going and seeing some of those games in person, going like, hell yeah, these games seem awesome and I want to see more of them. And I think a lot of the smaller games they're showing here are not, are not landing for me in that same way. This is, huh. This is Obsidian's thing, huh? November, so that's that's a this year game. Mr. Mosquito 3 the missing teenagers from our otherwise quiet town. Oh, th this is that this is that if other thing. This is the, the Yeah, right. Right. This has been out like forever, right? This is Is this still technically in in game preview or early access or whatever? I Verbal knows you might be a little homesick, but that can be repaired. I have not looked at grounded in quite some time. First. You will need to survive the yard. Against terrifying insects and treacherous wastelands. Unfortunately, my memory chip is a little rusty. 
But with a little maintenance, we can unravel why you are here. Before someone or something terminates your tiny existence. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This looks like cool content for that thing. Oh, here, there you go. Game preview is fine. Game preview is finally over. It's a weird game preview is finally over. Cool. I'll have to check back in on this because, like I said, I I messed with it a little bit um, when it first hit and. Uh, and haven't really looked back, so it seems like a, a good a time as any to check out the full version of the game. Oh, well then. Game preview is not over. who does not exist. The shadow. The forgotten child mm. of a scattered race. Lost until now. Is this like a top-down stealthy? They oh. Hmm. The Erebon. Now they Splatoon have as a top-down stealth game. <laughs> But I am not their hope. I am their reckoning. Okay, so not top down. Wow, this looks cool. I would have been into a kind of top down old style stealth game as well, but actually. They will not drag me into their light. Araban Shadow Legacy. All right. Their light is when the, the I break, break stealth and then have to fight them for real. You understand? That looks cool. Uh -huh. Speak now to those who heed a dark. Okay. <laughs> Bold enough to cross the line of this Diablo, isn't it? For deeper knowledge. Who follow? Yeah, no, it seems like everyone in chat is yearning with me on that. Uh, born of blood and gotta say, Diablo Immortal has definitely made me think, man, I will check out a new proper Diablo when it comes out because I sure ain't gonna play much more of this. Well, oh. To truly embrace this power. Just gotta keep this head around with me until it dries out. You understand. Just gonna walk around with it for a while till all the gunk falls off. Eventually it'll stop stinking. Marked as a living sacrifice to this profane knowledge. Where's my skull? You will be a priest of Rathma. What about a like a barbarian or, you know, something like that? Could I... Like some kind of... Lady with a bow and arrow? Could I be something like that? Like, do I have to... Confront the darkness alone. Check out my skull! I harvested it myself! Check out my posse of skeleton dudes. 
Okay. I thought for a second there, like, hang on, they're not just renaming it to Diablo, right? Those are, yeah. Yeah, those are already announced. Those, like, here's our, here's our new class announce. Yeah. Wait a minute, are you telling me that Diablo will have a necromancer? Like, the necromancer. A commander of the undead who joins the other iconic classes around the campfire in Diablo 4. So I guess this is, you know, the a, a more... Um, the elemental sorceress, the crafty rogue, and the powerful like druid. Blizzard people are getting stage and time, right? I mean, that's... The, uh, Lilith, the daughter of hatred... We haven't seen a lot of other third parties up here. corruption and evil as she fights to reclaim our dark gothic world as her own. And it's up to you. Wasn't Rod on Gears. So Rod left to go now, to Blizzard the and the then they bought Blizzard. The so history of the franchise. Uh, Building on top of the best of what's come before with some, you know, unique twists all its own. So let's dig a little deeper by watching, for the first time I might add, some Xbox Series X gameplay. While hearing from a few of the many people behind the game. I'm excited this is going to come to console right out of the gate. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Like Diablo 3 was really fun. Diablo 4 is the next generation uh, of on a controller. RPG. They did nice work. Building, monster slaying and loot collecting with there you go. A fully realized open world. What do you want out of Diablo? I just want to spin and murder. It's gory and fucking kobolds or whatever. Skeleton dudes, bone men. Diablo 4 is all about player choice. Ah, takes all, all right. the pillars of a Diablo game and just expands them with all the new features that weird people blood really wave love sure in modern games whoever you see yourself being you can create in Diablo 4 it's important to include robust character customization because then I can play the fantasy that I want to play you, you see the character from a, such I like Diablo Immortal had facial customization and I looked at it I was like who I'm never like I'll see this on an inventory screen and maybe in a cutscene or two like but most of the game I'm seeing the game from such a distance who cares feels very powerful and fun One of the really cool things about having an open world is your journey that you take throughout Diablo 4 is your own There's no linear path that you have to follow We've got almost 150 dungeons in the game. There's all kinds of surprises as you're exploring. Okay. Strongholds are an enemy territory that you need to reclaim. This looks really nice. I, I, you know, I get they want to show it nice and all this other stuff, but like there's a part of me that just wants that nitty gritty, like put the UI on and let me see. It now becomes a friendly town. Let me see the globes. Let me see the red one. Let me see the blue sometimes one. Sometimes it's a new town. Sometimes it's a new dungeon. You know what There's I mean? a whole bunch of rewards that you get. And you have a real impact on the world as a result. No, you can't leave us here. They might come back any moment. Local events are really cool little story segments that happen within the open world. You'll just be running through the world and then a local event will pop up. And you sure, just a, a freaking Randy Orton AR snake or get a group attack. Or just wail on these like giant world bosses. events that take a lot of people and you really Ooh. have to work all right. together. All right. That looks fucking cool. Being able to see all the players on your screen collaborating, trying to take this big monster down. It's it's epic. It's so easy to create a community. It makes Diablo more of a social experience. We've got fully enabled crossplay. If you have an Xbox mm. and your buddy has a PC, you're going to be able to group up. Or you could play couch co-op. Huh. Two people on a couch can sit there and have a great experience. Crossplay is interesting. I mean, I guess, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't it? But I guess, like, you think about Diablo 3, it almost felt like it was almost balanced slightly differently for the there, control stuff. But... Away at people. but you're also opening yourself up to being swung at. If you're like really, really good, the game actually marks you as like a champion on the map. You the weird rolling Diana, blood goo thing is. Chase you down. I'm excited every time I see it. <laughs> the last story mission is really the beginning of a whole different part of the journey. Now you're set up for the end game, and that end game is rich with things to do that allow you to get more and more powerful whether it's new items or new dungeons or new paragon boards. 
Every single time you come back to play Diablo 4, there's going to be new stuff for you to experience. And it's something that we're going to support for years to come. I'm really excited for folks to get their hands on Diablo yeah, 4. Yeah, this looks cool. Just to see millions of people really enjoying the different options. Through the campaign. Local events. Couch co-op. End game. PvP. It almost doesn't end. And we are so close. Are you? How close? How close is close? Oh. Okay. It's not. It's not that. It's not that close. <laughs> we brought updates that were free to those who sailed the sea. Though there's always more potential within. And as this song will spell out, there's plenty to sing about. Now that you can finally be a captain. Yeah, I guess it's first half of 2023 then if there's if the yeah, that's that's a good point if they're saying everything shown here is going to be playable in the next 12 months. Then that limits them to the first half of 2023. Does both loads of new features we proclaim? Or to set sail as a pirate captain? That's why we really think that you should play this game. And it's available with Xbox Game Pass, of course. Or to set sail as a pirate captain? Adventure will come knocking on your door. Or to set sail as a pirate captain? And you'll be amazed at what we have in store. The choice is yours, whatever captain you may be. Whether that's cold, gluten, no snow, stop shooting, rumble racing, or embracing, everybody's welcome in this game. So come set sail as a pirate captain. Our time is almost up, so as we leave, if you want to be a pirate captain, come do it in season seven to see your thieves. Season seven. I feel like it's what has it been the last 12 or 18 months now or maybe it's the past couple of years where just the like everyone is okay just applying the word season to every single game no matter what esports or otherwise coco cucumber that's just a, that's a fun thing to say that's just a fun thing to say Got a bad case of the fireball tremors. You know what I mean. Drink a bottle of fireball every night. I... I like the look of the enemy things in this. The kind of... Lightly voxely look that some of the stuff has, like that. Yeah, this is this is cool. Does the main character look different? I, you know, they haven't really showed. Does she also have that look, or is she out of step with the enemies? Like it looked like. That seems neat. Yeah, Al yeah, kind of an Alice in Wonderlandy sort of thing. Yeah. Enjoy your gaming. I think when you say, hey, it's from, well, you know, one of the makers of Inside and, and Limbo. Kind of sets a very specific expectation. Let's see. Let's see, though. 
Let's see. Okay. That's cool. That's a cool effect. Hmm. A lot of balls in this game. Ah! Too many puzzles, too many balls. Licensed Fushigi video game, finally. Uh, world premiere. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, mm. avert your eyes. Fame Douglas, no. Oh. Is getting eight. Yeah, maybe. I don't. Yeah. Sure seems that way. Yes, yeah, so is this just a, a new Neo or is this. That seems like you should run from that. That seems like you should step out of the way of that thing. Okay. Whoa. Long. What's up? That looked pretty badass. Yeah, is that that's that's not literally Lu Bu though, is it? That's or uh, let's find Japan let's find out. Is the home to some of the most talented and well-known game creators anywhere in the world? We're good if it's just that one sentence and then it's just boom. It was like the next Holy game, just like. He's to bring Wo Long Fallen Dynasty to Game Pass. Japan, click day next one. thing. Yeah. I'm also excited nice. to be working with Team Ninja. It was a long history of building incredible That's action true. games for Xbox, and it's great to be working with them once again. We know how important it is to our fans to continue to bring more Japanese franchises to Xbox. I'm excited to announce the return of one of the most highly requested and beloved franchises to Xbox from our partners at Atlas. Okay. I think it says something about the sickness in my head that I was like, maybe, maybe Xbox will start making Ridge Racer games. Do you think, I mean, like, this is cool that this these games will come to Xbox, right? But, like, how many players... How many players do you think there are out there that want to play these games that have been unable to because they have only owned an Xbox or, or something like that? Like, it, it's... Is there is there a fair amount? Of, okay. Me, all right. Seeing enough of you. Enough of you out there. Okay. There you go. You know, am I asking how many weebs exist? No, because like, wouldn't they all own a PlayStation? Because if they truly like Japanese games, wouldn't they have gone in that direction to begin with? And you know, it's like a sort of a self-selecting sort of situation, right? But, um... More people should play these games. Well, more people should play one of these games. <laughs> cloud. Persona in the cloud. 
cloud persona. Now, I'm excited to announce a special partnership between Xbox Game Studios and one of the greatest creative minds and innovators in our industry. Okay, so is this your Someone Kojima moment? I have admired for many years. Today, Inafune out here talking NFTs. Share, we will be working together to create a brand new experience like we've never seen before. Thank you, Phil. Hey, konnichiwa. Kojima Hideo desu. Eh, zutto tsukuritakatta game ga arimasu. Eh, sore wa dare mo taiken shita koto mo mita koto mo nai Blurry background here. Microsoft What are they hiding? Microsoft so we'll be playing this in the next 12 months, right? I mean, that's Thank you, Kojima-san. We're thrilled to have Kojima Productions working with our teams at Xbox Game Studios. Today, for the first time ever, we have focused on showing you games that you can play over the next 12 months. Today's show celebrates a diverse lineup of global game creators of all sizes who bring with them unlimited potential. I've got Halo Infinite Season Games 3 on that 2022 list. Like, I don't... Every single month, including Naraka Blade Point, As Dust Falls, A Plague Tale Requiem, Pentiment, Persona 5 Royale, Somerville, and Scorn, just to name a few. And we start 2023 with the launches of some of the most anticipated titles from the teams at Xbox and Bethesda. Redfall, Minecraft Legends, Starfield, Forza Motorsport, and more. This has been an incredible year as we achieved record growth across console yeah. and Game Pass, with millions of people playing our games every single day. And we have you to thank for that. Whether that's new players joining us through Xbox Cloud Gaming or our longest fans playing on Xbox and PC, we could not have done this without you. A year ago, we welcomed the talented studios at Bethesda Softworks to Xbox. Their teams have been hard at work, bringing their franchises to Game Pass, shipping updates to their games, yeah, no and Hellblade, building so new experiences for you to enjoy. Kind of, we know helps set a window for that. Has been eager to see Starfield. Our show today has highlighted gameplay, so it's only fitting that we end it with an extended first look at one of the most anticipated games in Xbox history. So is this now outside this of the 12-month window because he showed the slate and all that other stuff, and now is this suddenly like the, like, eh? <laughs> you know, this is coming out eventually. Starfield was on the slide? Okay. Okay, Starfield was on the slide. But that's, it was on the slide for 2023, Yeah. I guess they just pushed it to early. We'll see, I guess, right? I just don't have a ton of expectations out of this, you know? It's like I... I'm sure that it will do some cool stuff, and... So that's... Maybe this will do it, right? This will be them finally showing... Here's what this game is in a way that makes it work. Connects all the dots. It's hard to express how excited all of us at Bethesda are to be here with you today. We're so grateful you're spending the time and we know you've waited a long time to finally see Starfield. Uh, it's easily our most ambitious game ever. Like our previous games, it's an epic role-playing game where you get to be who you want and go where you want. But this time, you'll be exploring space. So let's jump right in. Just gonna this fill a spaceship full of cheese wheels. On the mysterious moon of Crete.
Is it gonna have vats, you think? For any kind of on foot combat type stuff, you think we'll see? According to the scanners, the abandoned research facility is in this direction. We heard you liked scanning plants and stuff. No Man's Sky fans, go. Scan those bugs. Wait, scan this. What? Scan, scan them. The hell's wrong with you? Just moseying around. Hey, scan that thing. Nah, we're cool. Ah, that one. Uh, mm. Nah, we're cool too. Uh, I mean, I guess it's a good thing you didn't start any shit there because there would be a lot more of those dudes. So was that, we got a compass there of sorts. We have a... Okay. It's so not quite cutting through all the rock, but just some... Mineral deposits, it looked like. Fidelity, I mean, this looks very sharp. It would appear that pirates of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility. Base, shotgun. Digipix. Digipix. You got 15 of them. Bobby pins? Nah, man. I'm just, I guess my question is oxygen a factor on any of these worlds. Is there any kind of like environmental concerns? I'm looking at this HUD, trying to see... There's just a health meter. I guess I'm not saying one way or the other that there should or shouldn't be oxygen concerns. I think I'm more just like... That's not always fun, like, resource management. Of like, oh, gotta get inside. Like, that sort of stuff. Left, there's O2. O2 on the left? Okay. Constellation, who, in the future the game is set in, are the last group of space explorers. To meet them... You'll head to the okay. capital city of New Atlantis. Okay, I'll look at that left meter a little more closely because that looked more like a compass to me, but... Uh, but I'm not running full screen here, so that's probably... My ship buddy! My robot dude! Welcome to Constellation. We've got we books. To talk about. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. They're building halo rings out there. That puzzle now. So, you found something? The new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? The artifact you found appears mm. to be one of many, scattered across the galaxy. If we can find more, we can unlock their secrets. Beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this 
told me that it spoke to him. Of course, the settled systems is full of groups with other priorities. Good. I I, I like the variety of indoor doesn't areas and stuff. You know, like. Together, huh. we take down these cutthroat pirates. I mean, I, I think in some ways you look at this and 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 think about the games that they have made in the past, and you look at it and go like, yeah, okay, this of course, of course, this is what this game is. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, no one quits. The only way out is death. The path Enjoy your game. Be dangerous, but we are not stopping. Most Dusties don't even make it this far. Because whatever lies at the end of this road will change humanity. I wonder how freely you will Forever. navigate in space. That gives you a look at the stories in Starfield. But ultimately, it's not our story. It's the story you create by who you are and the choices you make. And that starts with character creation. It's our most flexible yet. You can customize all the elements of how you look. You'll pick a background that gives you three starting skills. Okay. It says here you spend some time- Diplomacy and bargaining and- Having a way with words might prove useful. There are optional traits, and these come with unique advantages and disadvantages. But it's not just in how you can look, but in how your character plays and develops. The skill system combines the best from our previous games, and you can unlock new skills as you level up, and challenge then you progress. rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. So if and I just stand in a, somewhere and jump for six hours, do I get sick leg strength? To crafting weapon Let's do that. Needed to survive. And you can build your own outposts. These act as a home away from home for survival and resource generation. You can choose where and how to build each one, and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. But that that's makes sense, not all. given the stuff in you Fallout 4. You can even build your own spaceships. You can choose crew members. And yes, you can completely customize the look and layout. Hmm. There's so, loads of different modules, ship manufacturers, and more. I have to top say, top speed, so mass. Cool. We just absolutely love this. Mobility, so you know, it seems like that'll have like. It's not just how the ship looks; it's how it performs. Right. From engines to shields to weapon systems, because yes, you can fly it. Okay, I mean, it would be pointless to let you do any of that if you can't fly it. So sure. salvage those ships can I get scrap off of the blown up ships I'm gonna assume yes right I mean things you kill have inventories right
This looks up. Hmm. We can't wait for all of you to experience the game. Thanks again for being with us today, and thanks for all the support you've given us over the decades, especially on this game. It's been an incredible journey for us making it, but we know that's really only the beginning for it's when all of you play it that the real journey- you Put your Randy begins. Savage mods into it. And you may be wondering, just how big is this game? I am, in fact, so wondering that. Take one last moment and show you. I think I'm more interested in how- Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. Okay. And it's not this was my this question. Planet. It's all the planets in the system. But how many of them will have From things on them? The resource-heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems. Okay. Over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. How much? I mean, you, you know the answer to that question. You are the one putting the things we will find on the planets, Todd. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Right? I mean, that's the thing it is like, it's not, it's not the, hey, we've got a million planets you can land on. It's the, when they show that first planet and you're like, yes, if every planet has, well, you can't have every planet have relevant stuff on it because then that's not realistic, right? You need to be able to land somewhere and be like, this is just a wasteland because that's, that could be interesting as well. And maybe you want to set up your outpost there. How much of that is procedurally generated and how much of that is set at the start of the game? Or is it set at the start of the game and then procedurally generated from there? Like planets evolve differently, you know, there's, there's, hmm. I mean, it raises questions, right? I mean, that's probably one of the best things you can hope for out of a, a demo like this is that it leaves you wanting to know more details about that sort of stuff. But at the same time, like, um, you know, I, I guess I would I would have liked to have had a little bit more detail on like just how relevant are all those planets going to be? Not in like a main story kind of way, right? Because like, hey, um, there's plenty of spots in a Skyrim or Fallout that's just like this. I mean, yeah, you can go here. You you, you know maybe you'll find an item or something like that, but it's not going to be some deep experience. Um. And then we're wrapping up. Looks like we've got about 25-ish. Um, minutes until that PC gaming show, which will give me time to figure out where it's actually being streamed because I realized I, this morning was so crazy uh, with uh, my, um, my water damage woes here at the home. That uh, is, is, is yeah, or is it uh, is it an hour? Is it um, twelve thirty? I think it is twelve thirty. All right, we've got time then. You know, not a lot of detail on the future of Halo Infinite here. Um, but they've, I think they've given their roadmap right. I mean, they they've given their roadmap and then and then changed it up a little bit. Um, since launch, right? So. Um, they didn't necessarily say that everything that, that, uh, that they were showing everything they had over the next 12 months either. So, you know, could you end up with a golden eye in the next 12 months? Sure. But also, I don't know. Yeah. I think the, the wording on a lot of that leaves you kind of like, oh, okay, everything they're showing is out in the next 12 months, but there could potentially be a little bit more. Um, and, and so on and so forth. So forth. What am I even saying? Um, okay. Well, that's Xbox. This, that was Xbox. Um, you know, they're, they're bringing persona to their platforms and I, it's, it's interesting. 
it's weird, man. It's 2022, right? And the Xbox story is still we're you know it's still them making up ground with japanese developers and publishers and still getting games on their platform and um they're right to do it right i mean of course they need this stuff they they need to have they they need more games from every part of the world and it's one of the things that you look at when it's like oh this game's coming out on playstation and pc and then somehow it's not coming out on xbox and you're like what is going on what are we doing like you know the persona announcement's cool those games are not new and you know i think a lot of the people that uh want to play those games i, I think have but uh but yeah there, there are going to be people that, that haven't and that's awesome and persona 4 is a tremendous video game and people should play it so great um but like you know think about it they, you know they've been in this game for 20 years now right that's the that the 21 now and and they are still in this situation where they have to say like our japanese partners are more important than ever and we're still doing you know and 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 these are big deals right they're getting a new game from kojima that's huge like i can't you know you kind of can't understate that at the end of the day like his his draw uh is is very meaningful and and getting him on board is a is a big deal um for xbox right and and getting persona games on the platform great they should do it the next game from team ninja of course team ninja was like team ninja was the developer they pointed at one of them along with sega back at the, the launch of the xbox you know so so it's cool and, and they they mentioned that right they mentioned like hey we've had a long history with team ninja and they have and um, and so having Wo Long show up here, that's cool. I don't know if that ends up being multi-platform or not. Like that's, that's the thing now, right? Is like everyone spends the next 45 minutes digging through, uh, press releases and stuff, which, uh, now that my email address has changed, I don't get as many press releases to my inbox yet, which in some ways is nice. <laughs> um, but, uh, so the, you know, I can't exactly just dig through my inbox and, and read all the third party press releases, uh, to see all of them saying like, Hey, it's coming out on PlayStation also. Um, but, but we'll see. Um, you know, some of them will debut first on Xbox, some of that other stuff. Question here from clutch. Uh, do I think that Kojima was hard to convince to go with team Xbox? I don't. Um, I think that, you know, I, I think that a lot of the, the kind of like, um, Hey, we want to support the home team, blah, 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 blah. Um, stuff about Japanese developers doing PlayStation stuff. Like, obviously you know, from what I just said, like that is still happening to a certain extent, but it's not, I don't think it's, there's anything kind of, um, you know, it, it's not happening in the same way anymore. So, you know, like, and, and Kojima is out on his own. Remember, like, that's, you know, he's not bound by whatever Konami wants to do, all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, that studio gets to kind of call its own shots. And so they can do business with business with anyone. Um, and, and so when Microsoft comes calling and they're like, let's do a deal, like, of course, you know, you're going to take that call. Of course, you're going to see if you can figure something out. And and they did. So, so cool. Yeah, no mention of their uh, their cloud stick. There was a thing a while back about their puck or stick or whatever. You know, their their Xbox uh, cloud gaming device um, was a Keystone or something like that. There was a story I think on Windows Central or something saying like they've kind of gone back to the drawing board on some of those things and uh, and aren't necessarily um, you know they, they, obviously they'll get there right because they they're rolling out the Samsung thing um, and you know they'll be on more televisions directly. But, um, you know, yeah, they'll, they'll eventually, I'm sure, get some kind of device out that is cloud focused. Uh, yeah, no, no avowed, um, no golden eye. Um, yeah, kind of a lot of stuff. Why did you think Kojima Productions was linked with PlayStation somehow? Because PlayStation funded a lot of Death Stranding. You know, they published that on console and then 505 took the PC rights. Um, but you know, PlayStation was involved with the development of Death Stranding. But you know, that's that's a that's a deal. That's not an acquisition or, or anything like that. You know, it limits the ability for Death Stranding to come to Xbox, presumably the same way. You know, Sony had um, its hands on Street Fighter V development and, and funding anyway, not necessarily hands on development, but uh, but in terms of, of funding that video game and making it happen. And so, 
you know, th that's why you never saw Street Fighter V show up on on Xbox. Yes, it also uses the it uses Gorilla's engine. Um, Death Stranding does so. So obviously that's a that's a whole thing. Yeah, Legend says it. Right? Yeah, Game Pass continues to be one heck of a deal. I mean, you know, a lot of that stuff's going to come to Xbox and or come to come to Game Pass rather, and you know, that's meaningful, right? That's a that's a big deal. I think that. Yeah, I don't know. This is one of those shows where everyone had like a bunch of big game names they were throwing around. Like, what if it was this and this studio's doing this? And and obviously, you know, Perfect Dark's out there being worked on somewhere and, and what's id doing now? And, you know, there's there's questions and stuff like that. But it makes sense, I think, for them to try to do that 12 month focus. Um because I think I think they've maybe been burned a little bit by that approach in the past. That kind of longer look, right? Of of like where they announce the next Elder Scrolls just to kind of shut people up a little bit, but that doesn't shut people up. Um to say, hey, the, these are games that are coming out soon. I, I think in some ways that kind of speaks to a lot of the delay situation around the industry. But I think Microsoft has been hit by that quite a bit as well in, in ways that we've heard and, and, you know, have been announced with stuff like Starfield. But I think some of that stuff also ends up, you know, happening kind of behind the scenes before something even gets announced. Um, and so I think it makes sense for the position that Microsoft is in right now where I, I feel like they just need more big games like game pass is really cool and there's a ton of different games on it but i think like they've got a tentpole problem and you know i think i i like halo infinite a lot i thought that campaign was a lot of fun and i think the multiplayer is pretty good but that said i'm, I'm not going back to it every day um and a lot of there's a lot of discontent around halo infinite i mean granted you know you get out there in the larger community people can be unhappy about damn near anything but you know like the, the i don't know what their numbers are if it's if it's doing great or, or, or otherwise but like it just feels like a lot of the chat around halo infinite is not necessarily positive you know they they roll out new stuff and it's still kind of funky and you know even that last season debut like i i got back into it and i was like this is fucked up like i'm not getting credit for the things i'm doing it was like like stuff that you're like man this was a problem months ago and now it's back like that's unfortunate um and so in some ways, Halo feels like it kind of didn't do it for them in the way that it maybe, maybe they thought it would, or, or maybe, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure like on a numbers perspective, they're like, Hey, there's a billion hours of Halo being played and we're fine. Um, and, and obviously yes, every single online game, every single live game, every single, whatever, you're going to have people that are super pissed off about it because it's just the goddamn internet and that's how it's going to go. Right. But, um, I don't know. Like I, it, the i feel like the narrative of xbox right if you look at like the last like what five years or something like that if you look at the the point where you felt like the xbox one they were like okay we have we're not going to catch up here we're, we've got a lot of issues across the board in terms of the perceived power of the console the xbox one x is going to help with that and all that other stuff but uh let's look forward to the next time and try and do it to them then um, and, and then as they pushed in that direction, you started to see the narrative form, right? You're like, okay, game pass is really good. Like the services and all the other stuff that Microsoft is traditionally really excellent at. They're getting there, getting there, getting there, getting there. And then you hit that point, And at that point is supposed to be like, and by the way, we've got the biggest games in the world on top of all this other cool shit. And that's been the part that like, they ran into a pandemic. They ran into like, you know, there's a billion different reasons why this stuff happens. And some of them are definitely out of their control, but man you got to feel for them sometimes i'm sure they're doing fine uh you know they're very excited about game pass and all that but like it feels like there's that that moment that they got to where it was supposed to be boom video games it became boom video games and then boom these video games got delayed and then boom ah we spread this out ah we got all these studios working on games but we're not quite ready to talk about them yet because they're way further out than we thought because oh my god the world is uh, crazy and way crazier than we thought it was going to be at the time and all this other stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, uh, that's happening to everyone across the board. I don't think that's just a, a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft thing. I don't think that's just an Xbox thing, but I think with Xbox, it's like that feeling of like, man, they really put in a lot of work to try to get to this moment. And, and, and over the last year, they've kind of had that moment a couple of different times. And, um, Mm, you know, like they'll have Call of Duty, they'll have Starfield, they'll have the next Elder Scrolls. Like, you know, they're fucking fine, right? But it's just like, I think that, you know, when you think about that larger narrative or the, the larger kind of like push for Xbox and 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 the the brand and, and all that other stuff, 
you know, um, I th- I'm sure that they would love to have a, a couple of more just like big marquee releases this year to point to and go like, we've got some of the biggest games in the world happening. Um, and, um, and they do have some of those, but it's, you know, so yeah, no one versus 100, no golden eye, you know, it's like, those are sorts of things that seem like they're in the works in some way, probably, I mean, or at least being thought about who knows, maybe one versus 100 is completely dead at this point. Who could say, but, um, you know, golden eye at least seems like something that's going to happen. Right. Unless it fell apart again. Who can say? No Stalker 2. Stalker 2, obviously, uh, you know, the world, the world is what it is. Uh, so let's see here. Um, I am going to check out the PC Gamer show. PC Gamer's PC Gaming show. And that is due to start in, is it 45 minutes here? Is that what we're looking at? Uh I am going to check here. Um, I believe they said they had something from Valve. Um, yeah, 1230. It's uh, 1148 right now. So I am going to um, I'm gonna chop these recordings up into multiple things. Is this, the end of this video is going to be me talking about the next video. Um, so th- thanks everyone for watching this. If you're watching live, I'm staying right here. But uh, if you're watching the archive, thank you. Hi, uh, check out um, uh, what uh, patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. That's where you can learn more about me, Jeff Gerstman of video games. Uh, and uh, And if you're watching live, stay tuned because we ain't going nowhere. <laughs>